Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments for the next episode. Today's top comment comes from the Ultimate Gamer, who says you are an old German veteran using outdated weaponry. Primary is the Substellator 1906. Secondary, the number three revolver. Because it's a cowboy revolver, therefore outdated. Melee, the trench mace. Grenade smokes. Gadget one is med pack. And gadget two is the HE rifle grenades. I hope your gameplay is varied and fun. See you next Monday. Now, I really have been enjoying the thematic World War I loadouts. And in a weird way, I was looking forward to this one, even though it's using the Substellator 1906, which is a rifle that I have deemed as one of the worst guns in Battlefield 1. I think the medic weapons in general are a bit tough to use compared to some of the other weapons in this game. And the Substellator 1906 is the worst of the medic weapons. One of the biggest problems with this gun, in fact, pretty much the big problem with this gun, is that it only has five rounds to shoot. And considering it takes about three rounds to kill somebody with this, it doesn't give you a lot of breathing room to miss any shots. You miss three shots and you're pretty much not gonna get a kill before you need to reload or switch to your sidearm. So it's a very difficult weapon to use. And considering that you often run into more than just one enemy in Battlefield, considering you're playing on servers with up to 64 players at a time, having five rounds in a weapon that does so little damage is just a joke. Now DICE is definitely aware of just how ineffective this weapon is and they're doing something about it, although I don't think they're quite doing enough, or at least they're not going in the right direction. In CTE they have actually patched this gun to make it more accurate so that you can fire it quicker and it's not going to lose its accuracy as quickly and that should help you to drop people a little bit faster but I just don't think it's enough in this game. Battlefield 1 is pretty fast paced. People are moving around, jumping all over the place. So added accuracy isn't necessarily going to be the most beneficial thing with this gun. And you can't really increase the ammunition capacity because that's how the weapon was designed in real life. What you could do is change the damage output, especially in close range, to give it something like a two shot kill potential. So have it do 50 or 55 damage maximum, allowing you to two shot somebody down in close quarters. That would make this a much more interesting weapon, but uh, DICE doesn't seem to be moving in that direction. And I still think this gun is going to be borderline unusable until DICE actually changes the damage output. Now, all that being said, you can still do well with this weapon as long as you have a good enough game sense. Battlefield is a casual enough game that especially in bigger servers, there's enough easy prey out there if you're a good enough player to make decent work with this weapon and I was able to top the scoreboard a few times using the Substellator 1906. It wasn't that difficult but the thing that just always kept getting to me was the fact that I'm pretty much reloading this rifle in between each kill. There was only a few times that I dropped two people before having to reload this rifle. Often I would have to switch to my sidearm to get any sort of finish up kills because the reload process on the Seb Ladder 1906 is very long as well for only five rounds. If you don't shoot off all five, then the reload is gonna take a very long time. And I found myself after getting used to the weapon, uh, just firing off all five rounds. Even if I killed somebody within the first three rounds, I would fire off those last two just to get an incredibly fast reload, or at least the faster reload. Otherwise, it just didn't make sense to try and reload four rounds. And as much as I appreciate the visually accurate reload system in Battlefield 1, it does make certain guns like this one, for example, that much worse when you have to only reload three or four rounds. It's just going to take you forever in a day. Now, because the Sebsa ladder doesn't have any sort of magnified optic to zero in on people further away, you really do have to use this gun at medium or rather medium close range, which is almost comical again, considering its magazine capacity. The gun forces you to use it at a range at which it's pretty much terrible. So it's one of the reasons why people just hate this gun so much because it just doesn't have a practical use on the battlefield when stacked up against pretty much any other medic weapon out there. 
Now using the uh, number three revolver as a backup kind of makes sense in this situation because I pretty much always have to close the distance with my opponent. The number three revolver, despite uh, it being a revolver, actually is a close range weapon because of the damage drop off. The number three is only effective if you're doing the maximum damage, which will allow you to two shot kill your opponent. If you're not two shotting with that gun, then it's a very difficult sidearm to use. Fortunately, the number three did see a few updates since the launch of the the game so it performs a little bit better firing a little bit quicker um, and it is a fun weapon to use again in close quarters not a versatile revolver though both of these weapons reload slowly and both have very small magazine capacity so uh, switching from an empty primary to a secondary isn't always the most fun situation and especially if you run out of ammo with both you're in for a very long reload process now defensively my strategy with this class was to find a choke point where I could engage somebody at sort of medium to medium close range get the kill run away and reload to re-engage the person who was probably next to or right behind that guy. I usually couldn't engage two people at once, or if I did, it was very risky. So I always had to be in a situation where I could engage and then retreat while reloading and then re-engage and hopefully try and maintain my ground. But if three people uh, attacked at the exact same time, it was almost impossible to hold them off with this loadout, regardless of their skill level. That's just how bad this gun really was. Now, when it comes to playing this class, Offensively, I could usually attack an objective but not go all the way in. I would have to sort of get close to it, the perimeter, and start picking off targets while letting my squad use me as sort of a mobile spawn point, trying to stay alive as best as possible. I couldn't really charge ahead and sort of brute force my way onto the point simply because of my ammunition limitations with this class. No matter how well I did, I just wouldn't be able to do enough brute force damage on my own to clear off an objective. So I really was way more reliant on my teammates. And at times that was incredibly frustrating, um, not being able to sort of brute force it on my own. Um, teammates would spawn on me and go in, but uh, I wasn't able to help out too much, especially without having the uh, syringe. Not running a medic class with the syringe is pretty much the worst thing you can do as a medic. Like it doesn't make any sense because that's one of the main benefits to have as a medic class. I did have a med pack, which I was able to heal my teammates with, but I wasn't able to go in there and keep my teammates alive. So it really felt like I was being cheated out of one of my best and most useful abilities. So this clip here of where you see me sort of hanging off the point and waiting for people to come into this pillbox and then get an easy kill is basically the best case scenario for this class. Killing targets one at a time, having the ability to easily retreat and reload, and then killing another target one at a time. It really wasn't very effective other than sort of just keeping the enemy numbers at bay. I was never able to clear them out completely, but just sort of slow them down from completely reinforcing an objective. And even so, you can only hold open ground for so long in this game before a mortar system is going to take you out. Now running with smoke grenades on the other hand, especially for the attacking side, was incredibly useful. Not necessarily just for me pushing up, but for really obscuring the vision on my teammates or a major flanking route. It was just so useful and my team started to get used to the fact that often we would have smoke down and they would try and take advantage of it. Now, uh, admittedly, especially on this round here, my team was not particularly great, but it did help us, I feel, push along this map and get towards the very end. We actually uh, never ended up winning this round despite getting all the way to the end and even having two freaking reinforcements, but I have a feeling that uh, providing good smoke cover was actually very beneficial, especially for parts of the map where you have to push up in open trenches or open fields where there just isn't enough physical cover. Unfortunately, smoke grenades are fairly underutilized in Battlefield, even on a 64 player game. And I think the problem with that is that normal grenades have become significantly more effective than they used to be in previous Battlefield games. And uh, gas grenades also kind of provide you a little bit of visual cover and also a huge potential to get enemy kills. So I think the buffing of other grenades has really made smoke grenades far less popular, but hopefully people will start using them more, especially in the operations game mode because they're insanely uh, useful. One of the big problems, of course, is that the game has no way of rewarding somebody for using smoke grenades in a strategic manner. You can get points from gas grenades or frag grenades even for just damaging the enemy, 
but putting down a well-laid smoke grenade that allows your entire team to push up isn't going to reward you with any points. So that is one of the problems with the sort of point system and strategic elements in Battlefield. I don't think we'll be finding a particularly great solution to that aspect of Battlefield anytime soon, but as far as this loadout goes, I like the concept of using older or less technologically superior weapons, but at the same time, this one was just bad on all fronts. No syringe, crappy primary, not my favorite secondary, it just wasn't that enjoyable to use. But I do appreciate the thematic motivation behind this loadout comment, so as always guys, thanks for watching, keep the loadout comments coming, don't forget to post them down below, and I'll see you next time, this is Level Cap, signing off.